to Doom Dead Reckoning. Wave goodbye to civilization. You're on your own now, buddy. Philmont has over 315 miles of well-established trails on 140,000 acres, but through a special use agreement with the Forest Service, crews have access to another 100,000 acres on the Valle Vidal wilderness that provide a unique opportunity to bushwhack off-trail to locations using only a map and a compass, and enjoy nights under the stars with few if anyone around. The boys are practicing a little cross country while we're close to the road. I'm designated to actually hang back and follow the road because eventually we'll run into the road again. They're off in the woods over there. And the road continues over here a little bit. But since we're out here, we can look around. I've got some clear ground to look. Mr. Bert about stepped on a rattlesnake as we were walking through the field, probably because we were so focused on the pronghorn that I went and got some pictures of. So, but if I turn behind us, we're out. There's our first clear shot of Baldy. It's covered by clouds. I got a picture earlier without it through the trees. I'm gonna head the opposite direction for a while and then come back this direction. But there's where we're gonna end up in a few days. Way out there. After emerging from the woods, the crew reunited at the windmill in Beatty Lakes. They were aiming for the intersection, and the intersection is back over here. Oh, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Prairie dog family right around here. They're barking at each other. We're out in the cattle field. Deer says, stay away from my family. Yeah, definitely. After reaching the end of the prairie dog potted dirt path through the cattle grazing fields, it was time for the real fun to begin. Our final destination for the day was Sealy Canyon Camp. Somewhere about two and a half miles north northeast of our location over the hills with no apparent trail to follow. Now was the time to use what had been practiced. We're cutting across the valle. They're doing dead reckoning. I'm standing on the trail. It's running parallel to where they're going. If I lose them eventually, I'll have to cut to catch them. But at the moment, they're just making their way across. Orienteering is the process of traversing a terrain with the use of a map and compass. After determining where you are on the map and where you wish to go, you identify the direction of desired travel using a compass and then journey to your destination along that bearing. It sounds simple, but several challenges can interfere with this process. 
Physical obstacles, such as boulders or a ravine, can prevent you from traveling your desired bearing. Navigating around the obstacle can change the bearing now needed to reach the destination. Being off one degree will cause you to miss your destination by one mile over 60 miles of travel. This is called the one in 60 rule. Not a big deal if you are searching for a large object like a campsite over less than a couple miles, but if you're off one degree every hundred yards you retake your bearing, that can compound very quickly. Most people also tend to drift to the left or right while walking if focus is not maintained on a distant object, a waypoint, especially when walking along or up a hill or mountain. Traveling to waypoints is the key to successful orienteering. Assuming you're looking at the map correctly and obtaining the correct bearing on your compass, identifying a waypoint, an object of focus in your desired bearing in the distance and walking to it before verifying your bearing and determining another waypoint ensures you will arrive at your desired destination with little if any deviation. Knowing and doing are not the same thing. The crew started out fairly well, but then began to drift. By the time they had successfully corrected their bearings, arrived at camp, checked in, and escorted to the campsite, they were exhausted. Welcome to the canyon, y'all just getting in? Yep. Oh. It's 523. We took us four hours and 27 minutes to get here from Dan Beard, we're only six and a quarter miles. Only had 687 feet of ascent. I think everybody's glad to be here and tired. The question is what time will we get to bed? Despite fatigue and hunger, some just could not resist a climb up the mountain. There are several igneous walls that radiate from Baldy Mountain. These fissures or dikes were filled with magma that slowly cooled and then the surrounding sandstone began to erode, leaving these walls protruding from the surrounding area long before the Sangre de Cristo range was even uplifted. This is a mild challenge. Each wall is a dike of one large mass of monzonite running several miles wide and more than a mile deep. While this may not be the most prominent one, named the wall, which lies further west, it's still a great place to soak in the surrounding landscape and grab a clear view of Baldy as the sun sets. It's the morning of July 12th, it's just after 6, and the wonderful lightning storm that we got to see last night dropped less rain on us than the night before. We are trying to be packed up and ready to go so we can do our program at 8 o'clock. The program was wilderness medicine and search and rescue. Come on, niggas! You can do it, niggas! Pull them back! Pull them back to the tree, Nicholas! We learned the mechanical advantage rescuers gain from using pulleys and anchors. All right, very good. So the reason why no one's moving. Okay. And then practice proper Lead techniques throw them off of transporting the someone on a stretcher. On three. On three. Three. Find <laughs> Wait, three, three, two, one. Go forward, three, three, to the meadow, one. where the chopper's waiting. One! <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. The crew also decided they had time to participate in a game before hitting the trail. The object was to knock your opponent off balance without losing all of your rope while balancing on the rock. Two men enter, one man leave. <laughs> There can only be one. Oh. Hey. Coincidentally, the winner always seemed to be on the same ah. rock. With the start time of our service project rapidly approaching, two miles to orienteer and a hill to climb, the crew made only a brief stop at the saddle to take a picture with Baldy in the background and then race to their next destination.
Each participant at Philmont is encouraged to spend a few hours on predetermined conservation projects. In the Valle, the BSA contributes tens of thousands of service hours each year as part of the special use agreement. This year, the focus was on fire mitigation projects. The crews trimmed tree limbs within six feet of the ground, cut down saplings, sawed debris limbs into smaller pieces, and ensured the fuel was thinly scattered around the ground in anticipation of a prescribed burn in the fall. The U.S. Forest Service over the last century has switched their policy from fire suppression to fire control to fire mitigation. Fire mitigation projects are designed to reduce the chance of large uncontrolled crown wildfires that do significant damage to the ecosystem through fuel reduction and prescribed burns rather than trying to prevent any fires or just trying to control them. Thin forests with regular prescribed ground fire burns of surface fuel allow filtered sunlight to reach the floor, increasing growth of natural grasses and shrubs, which ensures a healthier forest, reduces soil erosion, and minimizes the risk of destructive crown fires like the Ute Fire in 2018 that devastated 36,000 acres of Philmont property and will take over 80 to 100 years to replace. You get both hands underneath it and you go. <laughs> yes, there you go. It's a Charlie Brown tree, it grew up. <laughs> See my night tree? This is how good I am, I don't need no chainsaw. Sorry tree, you're a nuisance. You're a bad tree. You get down on the ground. That's how you tear people down with words. Ground fire. Go ahead, walk on gentlemen. We're at Ring Place, it's about 2.15. We're sorting out our food right now. We should be able to uh, get out of here hopefully within the next 30, 40 minutes. We still gotta get to Whiteman Vega for our camp for the night. Probably here in the background, there's some rain going through. Hopefully staying to the north of us. 